<laughs> I got a new tool! So on this channel I like to do unboxings of tools. Uh, on my other channel I have a series that I, that I do tool reviews, but they're like long after I've had the tool and used it for a while to give you a good idea of how it would perform, but in these videos I like to get a new tool and, and show you exactly what I'm, I'm uh, unboxing. Today's tool is the OTC Hub Grappler and oh, the part number is 6575 um, for the kit. And well, <laughs> before this thing weighs me down, let's just go have a look at it. <clears throat> So this is the <laughs> this is the wind taker, the hub grappler uh, from OTC. Now this isn't a new tool for me per se. I've been using this tool for some time now. Uh, this is this is this is my tool now. Like the shop that I work at owns one of these, but I I made the careful decision to purchase one for myself because. Uh, it's such a useful tool, but it really, really sucks when somebody else is using it and you get a job and you need to use this tool. And, you know, there are workarounds uh, before this tool was actually brought to market. Typically, uh, for what the, the purpose of this, we'll, we'll get into that, but typically you would have to pull the spindle off a vehicle and bring it over to a press and onto the bench. This makes it so you could do bearings and hubs and all of that kind of stuff right on the vehicle time saver it's fantastic so that that's why i spent the cash and i picked this guy up so let's have a look at the kit and see what's in it so first and foremost, the first thing you're going to notice is this giant jaw. And that is only a part of what you're, you're actually using this entire kit for. Uh, this, this jaw is, is definitely needed in this kit. Um, what it's used for is actually for pulling hubs off of cars. Maybe I'll throw a little added picture uh, overlay so you can see how that how that actually works out but basically what you do is you take these jaws and it's not a puller it's a pusher that's the difference that, that's what gets a lot of people confused when they first look at this these are pushing jaws not pulling jaws so you put this forcing screw through here and you get uh, now what you're going through you're going through the hub and bearing assembly on a car um, so you'll have to pull the axle out uh, for like a front wheel drive vehicle or uh, all wheel drive. You, you pull the axle out and then through the hole through the hub, you put this, this little guy behind there and then you can put the big, big nuts on the backside and then run your impact down it. And what it does is it's pushing, but it's pulling but then this is pushing against behind the hub and then it'll pull the hub out from the bearing. Fantastic little invention. Uh, before this, there was the hub tamer. It was a big awkward unit. Uh, didn't work quite as well as this guy. Uh, gotta say, been using this particular tool for some time now uh, to the point where I wanted to have one for myself because it is just incredible. So yes, this this jaw, the biggest part in the whole thing, is used just for pulling the hub. It's not for installation purposes or anything like that. Now, once once the the hub's pulled out from the bearing, then you need to remove the bearing from the spindle, and that's what these all these different sized adapters and cups are for so they they made up to each other and you actually use the forcing screw through this and uh whatever adapter that the vehicle calls for to force that bearing into this big cup and then that's where you retrieve it inversely uh you use you use uh whatever configuration of these 
these dies here to press the bearing back in to the the spindle and then there's uh, another configuration for pressing the hub back into the bearing. This is, uh, like I said, when you're doing bearings on a vehicle, typically you can take the spindle right off. It takes you away from the workpiece, you go to the press, you, you essentially use similar dies and a, on, a, on a press and you use, you use it hydraulically to do the exact same function. Nice thing about this kit is you roll it up to the car if, if you're not sure which bits you need, there's a whole listing and even little instructions inside here. But I'll guarantee you, you use this a couple of times, you'll basically figure the whole thing out. And I'm gonna put that there so it stays uh, nice and clean. But you'll figure out which dies fit what. It's it's not rocket science here, right? We're just, you, you're looking for the right size dies, right diameters, and uh, sometimes even the, the, the inside diameter of these cup pieces where they would fit um, on the inside of the bearing to stop the, the race from walking out and popping the ball bearings out on certain models. I can't say anything bad about this kit um what what can i say bad about what i what i know of this kit um there are a few parts that will wear out and there are different precautions that that people use for uh trying not to wear these parts out um one thing in particular i think it was eric O that said he found a bearing that fits on perfectly on the back side of here so you're riding it actually on a bearing as you're forcing it down. Uh, yeah, I think that was the, the South Main Auto Channel. And he did, he did a, a good video on, on explaining how to do this. He included that in the video. I'll try to find that video. And what I'll do is I'll put a link to that particular video in the description. Because uh, and I'm, I'm actually going to look for that bearing. I, I actually even took a screenshot. Here it is of the bearing and the part number that you would want to get with this kit in order to save save wearing parts out essentially is, is what you're doing because as you put this forcing screw through you're going to be forcing this screw and twisting it pressing it into and it's just a metal on metal surface so eventually this will get all marred up and then this will you'll notice it'll, it'll get a nice sharp edge to it and then wear down, wear down, wear down until that big washer end isn't even there anymore. You can use these spacers in between, but then you end up wearing these down as well. So it's a, uh, yeah, great idea. I'll definitely leave a link for that particular video in the, in the description. Another thing that's included with this kit that, see, I don't know. I'm, I'm working with the, the tools that I've got available to me in the shop that I work at, and they have this kit, same blow mold case, same, 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 same everything, except um, this isn't included. This is a uh, two jaw puller. Um, I actually own one of these, I use it all the time. It's in my toolbox in one of the end drawers. Uh, it just came with the kit, so now I guess I got two of them. But I use this guy for, for pulling tie rod ends all the time. It's fantastic. Little 16 mil end on it. Half inch, uh, sorry, 3 8 impact gun. Bob's your uncle. And you can, yeah, get uh, tie rod ends apart easily without busting stuff. Now what they use this in this kit for is for pulling the the race, the inner race off of the hub once you've pulled the hub out. I haven't tried this yet, but basically what they do is they supply you with this little wafer here, and you put that over top of the, the top of the, the shaft, the inner part of the shaft, so you're not marring anything inside. And then you grab the inner race with this and force it off. Now I typically just use the old, the old style way of doing it. Every, everybody's got their own way of doing stuff, but I've always just pulled out the zip disc, 
cut a nice notch in it, make sure not to go into the shaft, and pow with a, with a, a cold chisel. It's always worked really good for me. I've got guys that I work with that tell me I should use a torch method. Use what works best for you. If, if you're quick at it and efficient and you're not breaking stuff, do it, do it that way. That's, that's always the way I've seen it. Uh, another thing that's included in this kit that's not in the kit at my work, which um, it looks like it'll only be handy for a few different uh, purposes, but this, this actually is made so you can use these little bolts and you can go across uh, the caliper cradle to have a spot in order to pry against with this pushing jaw. Um, I have run into a few cases where that was a problem. I didn't have anything to push against. And it was it was really hard to get that get that hub out of there. So um, didn't even know that this was part of the kit. So maybe those cases, this will be my lifesaver. I'm hoping that's the case because sometimes you run into some that are just ah really fun to deal with. These ones, uh, they are in the kit that I that I've been using, and these are designed for. Uh, pulling pulling the axle back through the hub after your installation. Now, it shouldn't be that hard to pull the axle through the hub. If it is, it generally is because there's a lot of corrosion in there. I don't know why you wouldn't just hit it with a wire wheel and maybe some uh, a little bit of anti seize that's what I normally do and then whoop, it just goes right through so I've never had to actually use this unit I guess if I ever ran into the situation I got it yay so I've got it not a lot more to say about this there have been a bunch of reviews on a bunch of different channels of people unboxing it just like I'm doing here today but I, I, I have had a lot of experience with this one this is a solid kit it is up there in the price range guys it's uh a lot of people would consider this a shop supply tool which at my shop they have supplied it but just like anything else it's gonna get sessioned and when you go to use it and the threads are gone off of the forcing screw or one of the cups is ovaled because other guys just use and abuse it and it's it's just one of them things I'm not pointing any fingers, but people don't like taking responsibility for damaging stuff. So, um, yeah, I end up a lot of times with uh, the tool not in its working order. So, that's it for this kit. Maybe I'll come back and I will revisit it in the future. I would definitely like to be holding it here to show you guys again. It's heavy. Actually, why not? Let's go. Uh, so that's my unboxing of the OTC Hub Grappler. Uh, definitely a recommended thing if you are a shop owner and you don't have this in your fleet of tools, get it, the boys will love you. And if you're a technician that just really wants to be fast and efficient, this right at your workstation, it will make you faster. If you don't have to walk across the shop to get it, and replace parts because people didn't put it back together right. Um, yeah, it's worthwhile getting. But it's not a necessary thing as <laughs> just an employee tech. So, yeah, anyway, that's my, my look at it. I might revisit this and even maybe show you an instructional thing if, if I get the chance to actually use this and uh, show you it working. I'd love to do that. So anyway, guys, if you like what you're seeing, hit that subscribe button. If you're feeling generous, hit that like button. And if you want to be part of the conversation, leave a comment down below. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next one.